Hello, my name is Tanya Sliepczyć. I work as an operations manager at Books Go Social, and I will be talking about traditional publishing versus self-publishing and which path might be the best for you as an author. So uh, we'll first go through the traditional publishing route and all that it entails. Now, this is kind of a rough uh, road timeline, if you will, uh, through the traditional publishing route. So once you uh, finish your manuscript, you submitted it uh, to the agent agent hopefully accepts it and then they do the work where they submit it to potential publishers uh, one of the publishers accepts it and then the book is published uh, there are a couple of things to consider uh, going through this route um, first thing to say is that you don't really need an agent if you don't want one and it really depends on what kind of um, publishing company you want to submit your book to. And this is something that's very important uh, to uh, consider because that will kind of depend on, on the road that you take. Um, and this whole process can take a long time just because you're first trying to find an agent, which generally takes a while, and then the agent will probably want to make some changes to your manuscript, and then they start submitting it to the publishers, which also takes a while. And then you need to be added to the list, um, to the publishing list, which again, takes a while. So it's, um, it's a process. So once you finally finish your manuscript, yay, um, before submitting it either to a publisher or an agent, it's important to make sure that it's the best it can be. Now, when you're writing the story, you're too involved in it in a way. So sometimes it's difficult to see any potential issues or any changes that you might need to do in rewrites. So that's why it's good to uh, be part of writers groups, uh, to have a community of people around yourself that will give you feedback. And it's important that those people are not, or at least not just your friends and family, because most friends and family will find it difficult to be critical towards you. And for this, you need someone who is critical, but who is constructive in its criticism. In other words, who will help you improve your work. The first chapter here is crucial because when you're submitting it either to agents or publishers, they will first ask you for synopsis and the first chapter. And the first chapter will basically determine whether they want to continue reading the book or not. So I even recommend getting a light edit for at least the first chapter, just to make sure that you're actually grabbing their interest and giving yourself a better chance. When you uh, start submitting to agents, uh, you will need to do some research here. Uh, the best way to approach this is to uh, research for agents who are representing authors in your genre. Um, so, and this is something that you can find oftentimes just by Googling the author and looking and seeing if they have any reference to their agents. Oftentimes they put um, thank you note in the um, uh, preface or at the beginning of the book or at the end of the book. And um, agents would generally have their own websites with a list of their clients and backlists. So that's something to consider. This is important because there's not much point in submitting a business book to an agent who represents mainly historical fiction, for example. And that's quite extreme <laughs> example, but it's important to try and see which agent will fit your needs best and where will your book fit and whether the, your book will fit in their backlist and front list. Um, and this applies for to the publisher as well. So if you're going directly to uh, 
if you're submitting directly to a publisher, again, look at their backlist and their front list, look at the titles they're publishing and try uh, to kind of assess whether your book fits their list. Then global. So if you're based in Ireland and if you're writing about very Irish topics, something that's pertaining to especially to Ireland, then it would make sense to kind of focus on Irish market. And in that case, I would even say go straight to the publishers because it's a quite a small market and a lot of them will accept unsolicited submissions. Now, if you're writing um, something more broad, you know, historical fiction, romance, thriller, etc., a business book, um, then I would recommend going global. So because Irish market is quite small, you might have a better chance of uh, getting an agent in the UK or in the US. Now, it, again, the competition will be higher because the markets are much bigger, but it's still something uh, to consider and it's definitely worth trying. And again, remember, uh, look at their front lists and their back lists, look at what kind of waters are they, uh, do they represent, um, it's worth looking at the author's um, social media and online presence and see if that's something that you can start working on early on. And most important thing here, and again, this applies for publishers and uh, agents, is to not give up easily. And this is very important because Oftentimes, agents will, if they reject your submission, it will be because their list is full, they don't have enough time to represent somebody else, or your book just does not fit their list. So, I mean, obviously it can be because the book is not very good, but it's not exclusively the reason. And it oftentimes, it is just a matter of um, time and resources and whether they, they can take you on or, uh, take you on or not. Um, sometimes it will happen that they think your book is good, but just not good enough. And that means that you need to improve uh, your either your story or your writing on some level to reach that, that level of uh, presentation. So it's worth asking the agents why they did not accept and can they give you some tips if they uh, reject your first chapter then that's something to work on if they reject your manuscript as a whole then it usually means you know they obviously were intrigued enough by the story it's just that there were other issues so it's, it's worth asking for their additional feedback. Not all of them will do it because they usually don't have the time, but even if one or two replies, that will be a great, great help overall. So let's say you get accepted by an agent. Excellent. Um, so they will usually work on the manuscript with you. And this means that they will do an additional edit and they'll make sure that you're in proofread and they'll make sure that your manuscript is the best it can be before they start submitting to submitting it to potential publishers. Um, this is very common now. Like it was completely different 10 years ago or, or even more, especially uh, further back, but now um, publishers, especially big publishers who have uh, busy lists, will want almost a finished product. So this is where the agent can come in very handy because especially if they're a good agent, they will work on the manuscript with you and they will give you advice and they will try and make sure that your book is the best it can be. And then they start submitting it to potential publishers. So there are a couple of events to consider when you're submitting your book to agents. Um, London Book Fair is in uh, March, March or April, it depends on the year, but it's usually March. Uh, and Frankfurt Book Fair, which is even bigger, is in October. So these two events, um, basically, it's like a networking opportunity for agents and publishers, and they do business there and sell titles, buy titles, 
cell translations, etc. So sometimes agents will time their um, or, or they will accept a couple of uh, man, uh, authors before, for example, London Book Fair or um, Frankfurt Book Fair, and then they will bring the manuscripts there and see if they can sell it. So that's something to consider. I wouldn't focus too much on it, uh, on it, but I would be aware of it, just because um, th- this is something that the agents will think about as well. Uh, and then the, the whole process will take uh, can take time. It often takes uh, quite a while. Uh, so if you're lucky, you might get an agent within three months. If you're very lucky, within the first month. But that's that's not very likely. Just because when you think of the technicalities, when they um, read your first chapter, then they'll ask you to send the full manuscript. You need to send them the full manuscript. Then they have to read the full manuscript come back to you with comments and, you know, potential contract, etc. So uh, the whole process, if you're going through an agent, can take at least a year, sometimes more. Now, if the book is timely and it pertains to a certain event that happened recently or something that needs to be covered, then obviously it, it, the whole process can be uh, quicker, but it's usually not the case. Um, What else to say here? Um, So let's say you get accepted by the publisher. Uh, Publisher will do further editorial changes. um, And you will have very little editorial control, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You will also, uh, you you also probably won't have any input or uh, on the book cover, on the way your book is presented, and this will be handled by by the marketing team. And that's usually a good thing because they usually know what they're doing. And while you might think that certain cover would be the best fit for your book, uh, it's important to think about it critically and from the marketing perspective. So what will draw readers in, not what necessarily reflects your main character and a certain scene in the story that you think should be depicted. So, and this applies uh, whichever way you go, self-publishing or traditional publishing, um, leaving it up to professionals is usually the right way, way forward. Uh, One thing I wanted to say about the agents uh, is that Bologna Book Fair, which is for children's books, uh, is usually in May every year. So that's something to consider. So this is where where they focus on children's children's authors. Although they do cover children, children's books in London and in Frankfurt, but Bologna Book Fair is is focused on children's. Um, Okay, and then the book is finally published. Yay. So there are a couple of positive and negative sides of uh, publishing uh, through traditional means. So obviously help and support throughout the publishing process is very, a very good thing because publishing in general can be quite a lonely business. Writing itself is. So having someone, someone hold your hand and kind of lead you lead you through everything is very helpful. Um, now, it's important to note that it depends on what kind of publisher you get. Um, not everyone will do it and the better ones will, will uh, try to be as uh, supportive as possible. You could even get a potential advance depending on uh, your agent and um, what kind of publisher publishing house you get into. Um, distribution is generally much easier because publishing houses usually have deals with bookstores, so they will uh, distribute your paper cop- uh, distribute your paper and hardback copies, meaning your book will be in bookstores and libraries um, as well. And there is an option for translation, but it usually depends on the success of the book. 
And of course, there is a prestige element to it, which um, is kind of yeah significant here because I think that's especially before like uh, ten years ago, self-publishing was kind of a curse word, but now yeah. Uh, things change, so I think the prestige of being traditionally published is uh, published is fading a bit here because of the reality of what it means to be traditionally published and the fact that it does not generate the amount of support you might be hoping for uh, in the process. Uh, so the nega, the cons. So obviously, long process. It can take years. Support, again, uh, can be limited. So this means that initially, especially if they're very excited about your book, they can be very supportive. But if your book does not sell well in the first two months, it's very unlikely they will um, infuse more marketing budget into your campaign. They will give it a shot for a while, for a certain amount of time. Sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's six weeks, sometimes it's two months. But if the results are not very good, they'll probably move on to a different title. And it might seem cold, uh, but it's it's a business. So it's, it's something that um, needs to be considered. So sometimes the marketing part uh, ends up with the author. So, more, uh, so author needs to continue market their books if they want them to sell. Uh, which is kind of not what you count on when you <laughs> start uh, the traditional publishing route. But yeah, that's that's kind of the reality. Um, the ro royalties are much lower, obviously, because um, publishing house needs to cover their expenses. And as I mentioned, the book needs to do well in the first few weeks. One important thing to note is to be uh, careful about vanity presses. Vanity presses, and sometimes they contact the author directly. Uh, they will sing praise about your book. Uh, they will say they want to publish you, etc. Uh, but they will require a payment for that. Now, uh, getting a hybrid publisher, for example, so you pay them to help you uh, with the publishing process, and then you uh, keep some of the royalties and control, that's fine. But vanity presses usually require a large um, sum of money, and then they keep the uh, control over your book. And if you want any changes, like book description, price change, etc., they will charge you extra for it. And not only that, you'll get a very low royalties. So it's kind of a very bad deal. That's, that's something to be aware of and to avoid. So any publishing house that approaches you directly, be mindful about it, especially if you're not very well known. Okay, to sum it up, polish your first chapter, regardless which route you take, through an agent or directly to publishers. Get new set of eyes on your manuscript. Somebody unbiased, and this is important. So your friends and family are fine, but they won't. They most likely won't be unbiased. Uh, follows. So this sounds very obvious, but it's oftentimes authors just do not follow it, and they lose the opportunity just because they haven't followed the submission guidelines to the dot. So if you don't follow the submission guidelines, they will disregard your submission right away. So you lost even before you started. So it's very basic, but very important. Consider your social media presence. So it's never too early to start working on it. And I know some authors are not very keen on social media, and that's fine. My advice is to pick a um, platform that suits you best. So there are you know, things to choose from. Uh, even if most of them do not work for you, you can start a blog. A blog is a simple way to put your writing out there and to kind of try and build an audience because you can write short stories, you can write, uh, you know, reviews for other books in your genre to try and build an audience that way. You can uh, blog about yourself or traditional publishing or self-publishing journey. If you're an expert in certain t 
uh, field, you can kind of cover those topics, especially if they're uh, related to your writing. So there are a lot of things that you can do that wouldn't be necessarily, you know, being on Facebook or TikTok. Uh, research literary agents. So who is representing books in your genre? Um, and that's applicable for publishers as well, if you're going to the direct route. What books are your readers reading? Who is publishing them? Uh, research smaller publishers, uh, because the, you might be able to submit directly and beware of the vanity presses and scammers. Okay. Let's say you don't want to bother with the, this whole process and you decide on self-publishing route. So here is kind of the rough time, timeline. Again, this is uh, not set in stone, but it's um, it's a good guideline on all what you need to think about when you go through a self-publishing route. So again, you have the finished manuscript, everything I said about that during the traditional publishing routes applies here, but it's even more important because you're the one, the editorial work depends on you. So you need to find an editor who will help you uh, get your manuscripts into order. So you have a finished manuscript. Um, beta readers can be very good because they can give you feedback um, from the point of view of a reader, not necessarily from the point of view of an editor. And this means I was bored at this point. I didn't uh, understand why this character behaved this way. This character is a bit boring. Um, this seems a bit convoluted. Um, uh, it's unclear what happened here, etc. So they can kind of help you pinpoint any issues within your manuscript that need a bit more work. And editor will help you just, uh, you know, develop your story properly, sort out any mistakes, and then uh, make sure the, the manuscript looks right. Um, so even if you get two editors, that's fine. If you get a different form, one from the for developmental edit and different one for copy edit and proofreading, that's fine as well. Uh, I won't go into editing too much because we have several sessions on this. Um, but a good editor is very, very valuable for you, especially when you're self-publishing. So after editing, you want to format your book for ebook and print. Ebook uh, should definitely be included, especially if you're a self publishing author, just because going digital is much easier than going uh, bookstore route. And generally, if you're a new author, ebook will be much easier to sell because they're cheaper and they're, you know. If a new reader stumbles upon your book and they're interested, they'll be much likely to order an ebook rather than print because it's less money and it's, uh, you know, testing the waters. Cover designer. Again, I touched upon this a bit earlier, but good cover designer is very important. So look at the top books in your genre on Amazon, for example, and see what kind of uh, book covers those books have how they presented their book. Because if you want to sell your book, you need to be not in the mid tier. You need to be presentation wise, top tier. So you need to, once you publish your book, they, your book should be comparable to those that are selling very well, if you want good success. Um, and that's, that means a very good blurb, uh, um, reviews that will be very important, etc. So the book launch strategy here um, is important because because everything is on you. You need to kind of figure out how to uh, make sure everything is presented correctly. Get early reviews. Start notifying people about your book, and then what to do on on the actual book launch. And then you publish your book. And then you need to consider marketing, promotion, advertising, etc. 
So positive things, complete control over the publishing process. Obviously you have control over the editor, editorial changes because the editor will work with you closely on this. Um, cover, the way your book is presented, price, etc. Your right, this will be higher because you're only paying Amazon, Barnes and Noble, etc. Uh, for your um, for the you know printing and shipping costs and stuff like that, but you you get the, uh, I think it's so for Amazon Kindle if your pri if your ebook price is two ninety nine or more it's seventy percent royalties, and for paperback I think it's around sixty percent. But don't hold me to this. I would have to double check. Um, and you know it depends on the on the uh, printing costs, so you can kind of calculate and see what what are your um, what are your um, royalties? The process is much quicker. You can go through through this whole process within six months from the moment you have a finished manuscript. If you can get an editor who can work with you fairly quickly, formatting uh, process is formatting generally takes like a week or two, not longer. Uh, cover design again should take more more than a month if you book it in advance. So. The whole process is much much quicker and then you have the freedom in terms of what you want to publish which is important so again the lack of support can be difficult that's why it's important to join writers groups uh, you know even online communities and there are plenty of them focus on um, self-publishing and you know how to uh, market your book, how to publish your book, etc. The process can be pricey, especially in the beginning, and just the editing costs can be up to a thousand dollars or euros, and which can be tricky, but again, this is a project that you're investing in. It's quite difficult to get into bookstores. Um, my advice here is not to bother that much, just because generally bookstores would maybe take like 10 books and then they will re return them if they don't sell them. And to get them to take 10, 10 books from you, um, it's usually a lengthy process. So, you know, people order a lot of stuff online now. So focusing on the online distribution, I think that's fine. If you want to be in bookstores, start local. That's the best way forward because your local bookstore will be much more likely to um, stock your book, especially if they know you. And then if your book sells well in that bookstore, you're more likely to stock it somewhere else. And again, marketing efforts depend on you, which is kind of, I think, the trickiest part of this whole process because, uh, you know, marketing is craft as any other, so you need to kind of know what you're doing. Again, there are loads of companies that help with marketing and advertising, books are social being one of them. So not everything needs to be in your hands, but kind of a general idea of what's going on is important to have. And here the author communities can be very helpful. Okay, uh, so to sum up, keep your target audience in mind when you're writing. And again, this is applicable either way you go. Uh, think about where they are and see if you can be there as well. Here, it's even more important with the training. Like in traditional publishing, it will help you get a publisher because it makes their job a bit easier. But here, it will make your job a bit easier because everything is on you and you're handling your marketing. Uh, research where your potential leaders are and be there. Uh, publish an ebook, not just paperback and hardback. Uh, beware of hybrid vanity publishers and scammers. Now, some uh, hybrid publishers are fine, but again, just research and see what kind of comments people are leaving and what's their blacklist and uh, the sales of their books. That's a good indication of whether they're good at it or not. Um, your book presentation really needs to be on point because if you're doing this yourself, you need to somehow break through the noise. And there are loads of books that are already published online. 
so it can be uh, difficult to actually reach readers because the, the market is so oversaturated already. So a book presentation is kind of the basic thing that you need to nail to make sure that your book has a chance of selling. Obviously, your manuscript needs to be uh, best it can be, polished uh, with interesting story, engaging story. Uh, but bef even before that, it starts with your Amazon book page or your, you know, <clears throat> Barnes & Noble book page, whatever. Um, join a community of independent authors. Reach out to your local bookstore uh, for support. In your library as well, you might, you know, even book a book launch there. Um, I know a lot of uh, authors are usually hanging out in libraries, so so it's a, it's a good place to start. Um, yeah, and that's that's kind of you know, there's loads of more details to look into, but there are lots uh, of other videos on this platform that you're welcome to listen to. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to put it underneath and I'll make sure to reply. If you want to get in touch, you can reach out to me at tanya at bgsadmin.com. Our website is bgsauthors.com. Uh, we are on Instagram, X, Facebook, and TikTok. Thank you.